Sometime back, I put up a video concerning a stove that I found to be rather interesting. That stove was the Saturn, and it's from a company known as Fire Maple. Since I put up that video, the company has released a brand new version of that stove, and this is called the Saturn X. It is similar, but at the same time, extremely different, like worlds apart different. Just wait until you see what the company has done. To start off, we have the storage case here. And I have to say, the quality of this is really, really impressive. We have a grab handle up at the top, and outside of that, we have two-way zippers to open this up. Here we have the brand new Saturn stove. Check out that black finish. That, my friends, is sweet. Now check this out, everyone. We're not done. We have this here, and we have these here. This is for holding the fuel hose and connecting it to the legs. And these are the legs. And they are hard to get out. <laughs> Come here, you. Seriously, really, really difficult to get out. There we go. You can see here on the inside how much padding there is that secures this stove. Again, everyone, this is a very well-made case. That's right, everyone. That is the big change for the Saturn X stove. You get the stove itself, and you get three expandable legs, extendable. They pull out and lock into place, forming a tripod. Before we talk about these and before I show you these, let's focus here on the stove. So what we have here are the pot supports. And there are four of these. On top, we have very aggressive jumping. Here we have the electronic igniter. Here we have the head. And next to the head, we have fuel pipes. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Flipping this over to the bottom, we have the fuel hose and the adjuster. And we have the four bottom legs. On this leg right here, we have the igniter. With the legs and the feet here, we have very aggressive jumping. Right here, here, and here, we have the placements for the legs. And then we have this right here. This rotates up, and this features a very strong magnet to hold your canister into place. That takes us back to the fuel heating pipes. There's one here and here. Basically, as you're running this stove, the heat heats up these pipes, and it vaporizes the fuel. That way you can invert the canister. When this is done, it increases the BTU performance of this stove greatly. Let's take the stove here, and let's put some legs on it. Now one thing I can't stand are how loose these pot supports are. You can see that. Whatever. Anyways, we fold down the legs here, and we take these legs and we screw them into place. Unfortunately, these threads, they're pretty grimy. You can actually hear it. Because of that, it's a little bit of a chore to get these legs into place. Not impossible, but it does take some work. And it's almost like nails on a chalkboard as you're doing it. So here we have it, we have the three legs into place. Now again, these legs do telescope outwards, so you can make this taller or shorter. To raise it up, it's pretty simple. You just pull the little feet up, and then it does lock into place, just like so. You actually have to look at what you're doing here and follow the arrows. From here, you can put up the magnet and then flip over the stove. And now everyone, this oddity is ready to go. Now I gotta get this out of the way, folks. I really, really, really wish this was not a tripod because that makes it easy to tip over, unfortunately. You have to think about this, like the top of this is quite heavy. And because it's a tripod, and also because it's not very high up, it's not very tall, it does have a tendency to like want to tip over. I would not recommend this stove for anyone who has small kids running around, someone who has pets running around. It, in my opinion, is simply too dangerous. Let's take the stove now. 
And let's go ahead and lower these legs here so I can show you all the first level, the first height. When it's lower like this, it is a little bit more stable. Still, because it's a tripod, folks, don't have your kids around this or pets or anything like that. You really do have to be careful. The top part of the stove is quite heavy, so it's top heavy. So you just really, really need to be careful with a product like this. This, in some ways, is very similar to like a Scottle, but it's different. It's not as tall, I should say. And because of that, it's just not as stable. The legs here are very short, even when fully extended. It's top heavy, so just be careful with this product. But as far as the first level goes, this is it. Now that you all have seen this stove with the legs on it, I'm going to take those off. Let's take them off and let's do a quick boil test. I forgot to mention it everyone. When you have the leg set up with the magnet hanging down, you can take the gas canister and connect it to that magnet. And basically it suspends the gas canister inverted underneath the stove. What I have here is two cups of water, which is our typical test amount. With this boil test, folks, I'm going to film this both ways with the canister upright and also inverted. We'll start off here with the fuel canister upright and we'll see how well this performs. When it comes to inverting the gas canister, there is a problem when it comes to this and it's time. The company says you have to run this stove for five minutes before you can invert the canister. It takes five minutes for those heating tubes to get hot enough to vaporize the fuel. Otherwise, you could have a big problem. Waiting five minutes, that's substantial. That's a substantial amount of fuel wasted. But it is what it is. So folks, let's go ahead. Let's get started. Let's see how fast this boils two cups of water in the 4,000 watt mode. So, this stove did pretty good. That is not a bad result at all. Two minutes, 43 seconds. Now, let me say this, everybody. Now that the stove is turned off, the smell of this thing is atrocious. There's a very strong chemical smell. Not quite burning, but whatever it is, it's bad. It may be like the black paint that's heated up or something, but no matter what it is, it smells really, really awful. Okay, I am going to basically reset let the stove run for five minutes we'll invert the canister and we'll see how fast this stove goes all right everyone it is now go time. Put this on. Start. That, my friends, was a very interesting result. As soon as I inverted the canister, it did seem like the output increased, but only momentarily. It kind of spit and sputtered, and then it went back to like what I would consider normal. Basically the same as when the can was just standing upright. So as far as the performance goes, there was really no difference between the two. The first time with the canister upright, that was two minutes, 43 seconds. This took three minutes. We're within a margin of error there based upon a slight breeze and so on. So I would say for all intensive purposes, the claims about this being faster, stronger, having more BTUs and wattage when the canister is inverted is not accurate. There's really no difference between the performance of either mode. I can tell you all one thing for certain, 
This stove stinks. It absolutely stinks. The chemical smell coming off of this, I mean, it's awful. And it has to be that black paint that's on there. It is really, really bad. Now that you all have seen this stove in action, let's go over the stats concerning it. So right off the bat, this runs on isobutane and isobutane only. The hose length is 27 and a half inches long. When it comes to the power, the company claims 4,400 watts when the canister is upright and 11,000 watts when it's inverted. For all intents and purposes, I cannot say that this is true. To me, it appears that the stove runs at one level and one level only. As far as the materials go for the stove, you're looking at stainless the steel, copper, silicone, and ceramic, along with some plastic. When it comes to the store dimensions, four and three quarter inches tall and roughly eight inches wide. When the stove is set up all by itself, it is four and a half inches tall, nine and a half inches wide from pot support to pot support. When you add the legs, the stove then goes to 10.2 inches tall. When you go to the next level, it is then 16 inches tall. When it comes to the weight of the full kit, you're looking at 3.9 pounds, which is roughly 1.7 kilograms, I believe. When it comes to purchasing this product, unfortunately, you can only find it on the Fire Maple website. You cannot purchase this on Amazon. I've mentioned this before with other Fire Maple products. People want to purchase their products from Amazon. That way, if they have an issue, they can quickly and easily return that product. Unfortunately, you cannot do that here. If you're interested in this product, you have to purchase it from the Fire Maple website. You have to give them your information and so on. I would love to see Fire Maple change their policies here and offer more products on Amazon. Anyways, folks, as far as the price goes, you're looking at $110. Now it's a good time to go over my thoughts and impressions of this stove so far. So overall, I do like this stove. With that being said though, I do not think this is a big upgrade over the original Saturn stove. The addition of the legs is interesting, but not all that useful really. The thing is this, if you add the legs on and you set it on the ground and you set it up to the highest point, it's still too low. Even if you're in a camping chair, it's too low. If you put it on a table and you're sitting in a chair, it's too high. If you stand up, it's too low. So as far as those legs go, I really don't see the benefit there. If the stove stood to roughly waist height, then you can easily cook on it and that would make sense. But as is, in my opinion, it is simply too short. As far as inverting the canister goes, that really makes no difference at all. I have to say I really like the appearance of this stove. With the black paint, it looks sharp. Unfortunately, I think that's what's smelling so bad. I mean, when it gets hot, and I mean really hot, it's almost like it's burning off. I don't see any signs of that happening, but I definitely smell it. The quality of the stove looks to be excellent so far. I've had no issues. I don't see anything that could potentially be an issue. I will say with the original Saturn stove, initially I praised it but I did ultimately have a problem with that stove. And that issue was with the adjuster. After a great deal of use, it acted like it was stripped out. So I can actually turn that adjuster and it would make no adjustments to the stove itself. I would have to turn, 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 then it would turn on. Or I'd have to turn, 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 then it would go down or turn off. So again, it's almost like it was stripped out. But as is with this Saturn X stove, I've had no issues and the quality is very good. There's no rough edges, all of the metalwork, the cutting, everything's very smooth and it looks good. The built-in igniter works every single time and it's very good. When it comes to the pot supports, you can have those inwards for smaller items or outwards for larger items. Just about any size pot, cup, pan will fit on this stove. With the legs, once you have them opened up, this stove is very stable. You can cook on this and you're not gonna have any issues. If you go to the tripod mode, you will though. Because the stove has preheat tubes, this stove is going to perform well in the winter time. Basically, you fire this up, those tubes are gonna warm up and it's gonna perform really well when it's cold out. It's going to vaporize that fuel so you get a consistent level of performance. As far as the value goes of this stove, I think $110 is too much. The performance is good, but the simple fact is you could buy really good stoves for a whole lot less than this. I mean, you can get double burner stoves for a whole lot less. For an example, you can get the Nature Hike double burner stove and a canvas case, and that's a really nice setup for less than this stove. Or you can buy the BRS32 stove 
for basically half as much. And that stove really does perform well. And it's super small, very compact, and then it spreads out. That really is a cool stove. Make sure to check out my review of that. Also, I have a review on the Nature Hike double burner stove. One claim that Fire Maple makes that's completely untrue concerning this stove is that they say that this is windproof. And that is, again, simply not true at all. There's no windscreen included with this stove. And in fact, there's no wind protection at all. You can see here how the stove head is actually above the rest of the stove meaning if there's any breeze at all it's going to influence this stove and hamper performance if you plan to use this in a windy environment you will need some sort of windshield as it stands here with this stove the performance is good the design is questionable and I think that's where I'm going to wrap this up you all have my thoughts and opinions you've seen it in action and you can make up your own minds is this a stove for you would I go out and purchase this again? No, I would not. And with that, my friends, I am done. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you all think about the Saturn X? What do you all think about the tripod legs? I don't like that. It's just too top heavy, too dangerous. If the company was going to do a Saturn X2, I would love to see four legs and also the ability to get that stove up higher. This is now going into review rotation. I'll begin testing this out. In the future, my final review of this product will come out. Make sure to stay tuned to my channel. If there's any sort of issues with this product, if my opinion opinions change, I will let you know. Anyways, folks, those are my thoughts. I cannot wait to hear yours. Again, comment down below. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up before you go. Oh yeah, I appreciate it. Everyone, strength and honor. Bye for now.